and welcome back. Uh, so in this exercise, we're going to look at a common application of this concept of combinations, or specifically counting combinations, uh, in the context of a lottery. This is effectively how lotteries are working. You have, uh, you buy a ticket, it's got a set of numbers on that ticket, and then the, the lottery officials, they draw some numbers out of a drum full of numbers, and you need to match or you're hoping that the numbers that are drawn are the same as the ones on your ticket, right? And then you win thousands or millions of, of dollars. The order doesn't matter. So if, uh, if they draw a five, six, and a seven, uh, it doesn't matter if on your ticket it says five, six, or seven, or maybe on your ticket it says six, seven, and five, you're still a winner. You're not trying to match the order, you're just trying to match the, the numbers. Okay, so one of the biggest lotteries, of course, you probably all are aware of the Powerball lottery. Uh, and so we're going to look at what are the odds of winning the Powerball lottery in, in two cases, actually. Uh, one is before October 15th, where they, they had uh, one particular method of, of drawing, drawing the, the, the numbers, and then they changed the odds of winning after October 15th. So here we'll just we'll produce two columns here. So this is going to be before October 2015 and after October 2015. And here we'll just look at how your odds of winning uh, have changed uh, as a result of this change in the way that they've they've set up the game. So the first problem says uh, compute the number of different ways the first five numbers could be drawn uh, before and after the change. What is the probability of winning this two hundred thousand dollar prize? Right. If you all, if you only match those five white balls, then you win two hundred thousand dollars. You only win the jackpot, of course, if you match those five white balls plus uh, the the red Powerball. And so that's what we're going to calculate here in part B. So, in order to calculate the probability of winning uh, that two hundred thousand dollar prize, we need to figure out how many different ways, so this is going to be before October 2015, how many different ways can those five white balls uh, be drawn from the drum of, here we have 59, 59 balls in the drum, and we're drawing five of them. So the number of combinations that are available, I have 59 factorial, so that numerator would tell me how many different ways can we order 59 balls, right? That's where we start. But now we're not interested in ordering all 59 of them. We only are choosing five. So 59 minus five factorial. So now this would tell us the number of permutations um, of drawing five balls out of 59. So how many ways can we order five balls, any five balls out of those 59? But here we're not interested in order. I win the prize whether I have them in the same order or not. So we need to then adjust this and take out the number of different ways that those five balls can be ordered. So we're just looking at how many different combinations of five balls are there uh, out of these 59. So then if we enter this into our calculator, I'm going to have 59 factorial divided by 5 factorial times, this is 54 factorial, and so I have 5,006,386. So 5,006,386. So that's how many different ways the five white balls can be drawn. How many different combinations of five balls are there from 59? And that's the original prior to October 2015. So what's the probability of, probability of winning that prize? Well, it would be 1 in 5,006,386. After the change, so then in October 2015, so now, let's see, they've increased the number of balls from 59 to 69. So how does this change our probability of winning this $200,000 prize. So before October 
No, sorry, this is after now. After October 2015. How many different combinations of five balls can there be from a set of 69? So 69 factorial divided by 50, uh, oops, it's still 69 minus five times five factorial. So here, this is now 69 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 64 factorial equals 11,238,513. Oh my goodness, I forget already. 238,000. 238,513. Let me just check again to make sure I've got it. Good. So, as a result of that change, the odds of matching those five balls significantly reduced from about 1 in 5 million to now about 1 in 11.2 million. So, as a result of the change, the probability of winning that $200,000 prize is almost cut in half from 1 in 5 million to 1 in 11 million. So that's part A. Part B, compute the total number of possible outcomes when the red ball is included before and after the change. So if we include the red ball, well now all we have to do, here we have uh, that red ball before October 2015, there were 35 possible uh, values of the red ball. So in order to calculate that, well, I have five million different combinations of white balls times that by 35, because that can now match with any one of 35 red balls. And so now this gives us, oops, five million six thousand three eighty six times 35. 175 million 223 175 million 223 and 510 so your odds of winning the lottery the jackpot before October 2015 would be 1 in 107 1 in 1 over 175 million so the odds of winning are, are tiny what if we look at after uh, the change in October 2015. So now after that, the number of red balls has decreased to 26. So if we times this by 26, now we have 11,238,513 times 26. Wow, 292,201,000. Two ninety two two oh one uh, three thirty eight. So as a result of that change, they've significantly reduced uh, the likelihood of, of winning both the two hundred thousand dollar prize uh, and the jackpot. It's become significantly harder now uh, to match those balls uh, that that may come out. So there's our answers to A and B. Now, what if, let's just imagine a scenario in which the player had to match not only the numbers on the five white balls, but also have them in the correct order. How many possible outcomes would exist? What would be the probability of just matching the five white balls? So now we're looking at what are the different permutations of those five white balls? So if we were to consider the permutations, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to tweak these formulas a little bit because the calculations are similar. So here now this is going to be permutations. All I need to do is eliminate this 5 because we're no longer adjusting for the order because now in this fictional scenario, order matters. So now the number of permutations before the change in October, 59 factorial 
divided by 54 factorial 600, <laughs> 600 million 766 600 million 766 uh, 320 Wow so it'd be uh, be pretty hard to win even that two hundred thousand dollar prize if we were to adjust this formula for permutations after that change and now we're going to have let's see 69 factorial divided by 64 factorial oh one billion my goodness let's just call that 1.3 billion so it's a good thing you don't have to match the order because if you did uh, your odds of winning are uh, you're probably better getting struck by lightning a few times in one day I don't know uh, so there you have it that's uh, there's how we can calculate uh, probability of winning a lottery uh, based on this concept of uh, combinations so hopefully this helps hopefully this makes uh, some intuitive sense um, into how to try to calculate these values and how to use them to obtain uh, probabilities okay thank you for watching